When you're meditating, does it matter whether you're a man or a woman? If you're in a deep meditative state, is, are, is your energy this woman meditating or man meditating? When you're deeply meditating, your body is not really part of the process. So the organ of reproduction that you particularly have is not a factor. But in the awakened state, non-meditative state, this is one of the primary identifications we all embrace. But in the meditative state, it's irrelevant. Naturally, there's male and female energies as archetypes. But I possess both of them. I may have a... I may have. I have a male body. I may have a male body. Yeah, right. I have a male body, but my energies are male and female. I'm very aware of these energies within me. So in my meditative state, they're fine as they are. They don't worry about which one's dominant. In the meditative state, I'm not a person of a position. I am not somebody with a certain degree of education. In the meditative state, it doesn't matter if you're a musician or an artist. Now, these are very significant points. In the meditative state, none of these external identifications or external characteristics are relevant. That means everybody can enter into the meditative state and no longer be bound by their particular designations. I think that's fantastic. I think that's incredible. Do you realize by simply going into a meditative state, you can free yourself from all that stuff? That's fantastic. And so when you are freed from all that stuff, what do you have? What you are. What is. There's not even any reason to feel bad about it or to think it's not good enough because it's fine as it is, because it is what it is. And another problem is we don't understand our power. We think we're powerless. But if we like meditate, for example, in the I am meditation and we allow all that brilliance to just flow out of our heart and we don't try to stop it, we're amazed at the brilliance that's there. If we can simply let go of these external things, enter into a relaxed meditative state, just say, I am, and just feel that energy of spirit flowing out in all directions, multicolored from our heart. We are in the state of being. That is spiritual mysticism. It is the goal of all spiritual practice. Now, what would be the goal, for instance, of a religion? Well, Love of God, maybe. Now, in that state of mystic meditation, if we simply now, just like we accept others, we just accept the divine. We simply accept. We harmonize and connect to, call out to the divine. Whoever it is that we feel is God or the divine energy, I might call out to Radha and Krishna because that's my particular inclination. And I say, I wish to accept and connect. And they are instantly there. Why should they not be? I am their energy. They are mine. They are the divine. Would they not wish to connect to me? We think they would not because we think we're not good enough. And that's the only reason they don't because we... Don't accept them. So the first thing is to accept yourself. And when you understand what you are, there's no question of not being good enough because you are what you are. You can't be anything else. If I am what I am and I can't be anything other than I am, how can I not be good enough? If I'm not good enough, that means I was made not good enough. But I'm not made. It's just an illusion. Let it go. Accept what you are. There's no reason not to. I'll repeat that. There's no reason 
not to. You can either accept what you are or you can create an illusion. It's your choice. But if you want to create an illusion, it's a lot of work. If you want to accept what you are, it's super easy. It seems to me this whole huge process of spiritual discipline is meant to simply do one thing, is to convince you you're good enough. Because at the end, it's the exact same thing you do. You accept yourself. And then you accept the supreme, the divine. And you embrace in love. That's spiritual mysticism. I'm a